for a hearing on the Equality Act. The Equality Act is meant to stop discrimination against LGBTQ individuals, laws to end hateful discrimination can be tailored to prevent injustices in various contexts like banking and housing and thereby end those injustices. This bill is drafted in an entirely different way. It would fundamentally manipulate how our society deals with subjects of sex, gender, and faith. Now we all agree that everyone should be treated with dignity and respect, regardless of race, sex, gender identity, religion, politics, and probably a lot of other categories that you can name. We're all human beings and need to treat each other with kindness and compassion. And for some of you, it may be sentimental for me to say that my guide is from the Bible, love God, that first law, the second law, love your neighbor as yourself. I question whether that is what this bill truly does. I strongly suspect that it actually would dictate what women, girls, schools, churches, doctors, and others must believe. I wanna hear from experts and ordinary Americans with life experiences. We need to consider the perspective of everyone who will be affected by this bill's sweeping language. We need to hear from physicians whose professional judgment may be overridden by the federal government if this bill is adopted. We need to hear from the occupants of homeless shelters, domestic violence shelters, correctional facilities with jurisdictions where anyone currently can request a transfer based upon gender identity. How would the Equality Act deal with these sex-specific facilities that involve no hateful discrimination? Still, other perspectives will help the Senate better understand what would happen if certain basic services on which many Americans rely if this act is adopted. Example, what will happen to Catholic or Methodist affiliated hospitals which provide excellent service to the public if this bill is enacted? In some areas, these facilities may be the only hospitals for miles around. If a faith-based organization has partnered with a community to provide very needed social services that would otherwise not exist, like a soup kitchen or an adoption agency for the hard to adopt special need kids, what happens to the people who relied most heavily on those services? To whom do they turn? We need to have a genuine bipartisan discussion about all these issues at today's hearing, and I just heard the chairman say that he's open to those discussions. Dismissing the challenges for women and girls and the need to protect religious freedom of conscience is no way to conduct a legislative hearing. I want to share the story of uh, one of the many people that we should be keeping in mind as we consider this legislation, the mother of a young student athlete, Chelsea Mitchell. Chelsea is a star high school athletic athlete in Connecticut. She told us she'd like to retain the right to compete on equal footing with uh, other biological girls. Instead, this accomplished athlete has been forced to compete against biological man. Many women and girls before her fought for legal protections under Title IX, which recognize that sex-specific distinctions are appropriate in some instances. As a father, grandfather, and husband, I have celebrated the athletic successes of talented young women in my own family. 
So I am deeply concerned about this act's potential negative impl implications for all girls and uh, women in sports. I have a letter from Chelsea's mom, and I'd request its inclusion in the record, along with a number of other personal accounts. I hope that at today's hearing, voices like Chelsea's will not be drowned out. We hear from two hit witnesses today for the minority. Ms. Schreier is a Yale-educated attorney and an independent journalist who is here to tell us all the ways that the Equality Act, far from treating Americans equally, would treat women and girls unequally. Of course, the Title IX or sports uh, issue speaks to just one problem that this bill potentially prevents for women and girls. This is an important issue, but it is not the only issue. Uh, Ms. Schreier uh, will uh, explain the extremes and far-reaching implications of the bill, which extend well beyond what this hearing's title suggests. I also look forward to hearing from Ms. Hansen, an attorney who, as well, about the bill's unprecedented uh, uh, impact on religious freedom protections. I hope that she can help us understand how the Equality Act would override protections that we enacted under the landmark Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It was championed in the other chamber by then Congressman Schumer, adopted with overwhelming bipartisan support and signed by President Clinton. All of these issues merit careful analysis and extensive deliberation by our chamber. So I hope the concerns of women and girls and of Americans of faith will be treated with inclusion and respect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Grassley. Um, 